to the first read aloud series in pulmonary medicine. Today we have selected PJ Mehta's Practical Medicine. This is one of the most useful books for practicals for internal medicine and respiratory medicine examinations. This book is very helpful for both undergraduate and postgraduate students. And so this is going to be really good for you to revise just before your examinations. Let us start with this beautiful book. So quickly, we're going to start with respiratory system examination. I'm going to tell you all the chief points that you should know in your viva voce and when you see a patient. So here we go. When you open PJ Mehta's respiratory respiratory system examination chapter the first page gives you a brief overview of what all is expected now this is very very important make a mental note of it and whenever you write your practical notes then try not to miss any of this point this is one of the most simplistic methods that has been given in any book and you can really get very good practical examination out of it the first is inspection. In inspection, we check four things. The shape of the chest, movements, mediastinum and miscellaneous. You may want to remember it as respiratory medicine RM. So there's one and three M's. So the shape of the chest. The shape of the chest has four S's, one H and A. So shape S H A and the S are four. So this one is the AP and transverse diameters, hollowing or bulging, and four S's: subcostal angle, shoulder, spine, and spinoscapular distance. Remember, this is inspection. We will not be measuring anything. Inspection is always performed preferably by the foot end of the bed of the patient and standing on the right side. Make sure you do these little changes because the examiner is constantly watching you. In respiratory movements, we are looking at three R's, C, A and I. R rate, rhythm and the respiratory character which is whether abdominal, thoracic or otherwise. The third R for me will be respiratory quality, accessory muscles and intercostal retraction. Mediastinum is the next point. So apex beat and trail sign help us inspect the mediastinum and miscellaneous for scars, sinuses and veins. In palpation, the first thing you have to tell the examiner and the first thing that you have to do is confirm all points of ins your inspection, which means you recheck the shape of the chest, you do all measurements for the shape of the chest, you check for hollowing, bulging, the angles, the spinoscapular distance is measured again with your tapes and we also further check the movements of the chest on both sides other than that media style position has to be rechecked tactile vocal fermenters has to be performed and miscellaneous things have to be noted when we check percussion we go both sides together one by one simultaneously you do not start on one side and go down and start on the other side and go down we always do it simultaneously the best way to learn percussion is try percussing all the surfaces that you know percuss your table percuss your forehead percuss your book percuss your bottle percuss as many things as you can and you will finally get that loud percussion that you've always appreciated your professors doing. The plexer and the pleximeter finger are very important and it's very important that your finger is in close approximation to the chest wall. That is when you will get 
a very good percussion and make sure the wrist is the point of movement a lot of examiners love asking the rules of percussion and the limitations of percussion to their students and be sure that you learn them percussion has to be done anteriorly both sides in the axillary region and posteriorly whenever you're percussing a patient or palpating him posteriorly ask the patient to cross his hands over the scapula very very important the other thing the last is auscultation we check for breath sounds we check for foreign sounds we check for vocal resonance and miscellaneous sounds and then we give a final diagnosis let's start with a quick inspection and know what all we should be knowing about it when you check for inspection and palpation look at this figure when you're checking anteriorly the patient's hands are on his waist when you're checking posteriorly his hands are on his shoulders and when you're checking the axilla he has his hands up normal shape of the chest bilaterally symmetrical recession just below the clavicle ellipsoidal with ap diameter less than transverse ratio ap to transverse 5 is to 7 and the subcostal angle 70 what are the abnormal shapes of the chest we know rickets pectus carinatum or pigeon chest remember rickety rosary remember harrison's sulcus it is triangular complex chest pectus excavatum it is excavated also called as funnel chest seen may be congenital falling rickets occupational in complex remember the term pomfret's heart a good viva question barrel's chest very very important barrel shaped chest now what is a barrel if you've seen huge barrels of alcohol that is classically what was a barrel so when we define an emphysematous chest we usually use this term seen in your copd patients here ap diameter is equal to the transverse diameter a very important point is definition of the barrel chest so you would say ap is equal to transverse or more the subcostal angle would be wide angle of lewis will be prominent and the sternum will be more arched and the spine is for this patient the spine of the patient will also be unduly concave forwards and the ribs will be less oblique or or rather the ribs will be more horizontal let's change this view and make it more comfortable for you right amongst the spinal deformities kyphosis and scoliosis kyphosis hindi mein kub so kyphosis where the curvature of the spine is forwards and scoliosis where it is towards the sides then bulging chest or depressed chest so examiners love to ask about a bulge and a depression a localized bulge and a general bulge so when we're talking about bulge remember there could be a plural cause there could be a parenchymal cause and there could be a cardiac cause for the bulge bulge may be one sided bulge may be both sided and bulge may be localized depression or flattening one sided depression no the causes again plural or parenchymal or muscular then the flat chest no the causes where it could be flat also read about alar chest and remember this terminology alar chest with winged scapula in advanced tb where 
the transverse diameter is almost twice and the scapula is winged. Coming to the rate, respiratory rate. The normal rate in adults is 16 to 20 respirations per minute. In children, it is around 40 per minute. So this is very, very important. Now, when we talk about respiratory rate, we see whether the patient is tachypneic or bradypneic. Tachypnea is increased, brady is less. Remember these causes, very important. When you talk about dyspnea or breathlessness in a patient, we have to give a scale. Usually, it's a part of the history. You must know American Thoracic Society scale and Borg scale of dyspnea. Also, very important in cardiology as well as respiratory system is MMRC, Modified Medical Research Council scale. This scale will be one of the main scales that you have to use for defining your patient and you must learn it by heart. Respiratory rhythm, normal rhythm. Talk about normal rhythm and if abnormal, mention the type of the rhythm. So a regular rhythm has inspiration longer than expiration. If it's irregular, then it could be chain strokes. Remember these diagrams. If you know these diagrams, you will never forget the definition. Here, there is a rhythmical alteration, normal, breath, apnea, hyperapnea, apnea, hyperapnea, apnea. Usually, this kind of a chain strokes rhythm occurs because of an important mechanism where the spontaneous rhythmic activity of breathing is abolished. There is an apnea resulting in carbon dioxide accumulation. It stimulates the respiratory center which starts hyperventilating. Now all this carbon dioxide gets washed out and there is again a depression of the center and again an apnea. Remember one main cause, narcotic poisoning. Another important cause, raised intracranial pressure. Also seen in uremia and deep sleep, if you posted in ICUs, a lot of patients in their deep sleeps, you may see exhibiting this kind of a chain stokes respiration. The other is cosmols. Remember the term air hunger and you will never forget what it is. It is rapid and deep respiration, air hunger. Patient would almost be like <sighs> air hunger. Happens in ketoacidosis, diabetic, alcoholic, and starvation. Biots respiration, chaotic breathing in raised intracranial pressure. It's all chaotic, no particular format. And apneustic respiration, usually not very frequently asked by your examiners, but you must know in pontine lesions. Let's come to strider. Strider is a long sound produced by prolonged inspiration where there is some obstruction in the upper airway. Almost like uh, patient will breathe that is a strider. We can have a laryngeal strider, we can have a strider because of mediastinal growth. A lot of people get confused between strider and wheezing. Wheezing is prolonged expiration. Strider is prolonged inspiration. Wheezing occurs because of the lower airway. In asthma, for example, strider occurs because of upper airway, like in foreign body or laryngeal diphtheria in children. What is stutter? Stutter is a death rattle. It is a rattling sound in your throat, usually seen when the patient is almost gasping for breath. The next important thing to know is types of breathing. And remember that the normal breathing in males and some females is abdominal thoracic. Males, how do you remember this? Males 
have a lot of pot belly when they have pot belly they use their abdomen first so abdomen and thorax both are moving but abdominal movements are more prominent the normal breathing in most females is thoracoabdominal easy to remember females thorax is more prominent so the thoracic movements are more so now if a person has an issue where the abdomen is not contributing much in breathing then his breathing will remain as thoracic that will be called thoracic breathing where in diaphragmatic paralysis peritonitis and ascites where the abdomen doesn't move and if it is more abdominal then abdominal movements are more prominent and thoracic movements are minimal like in pleurisy or lung collapse coming to the next topic now this one is this one is now about movements of the chest normally both sides of the chest wall move uniformly there's no bulging and no drawing of the interspaces so accessory muscles are not used what are the accessory muscles the allenes eye and the sternocleidomastoid so how do you check for movements you use a measuring tape at the level of the nipple and the chest circumference increases by 2 inches that is the normal when you get unilateral diminished movements either there is a block at the entry of air like a central obstruction or there is a pathology in the lung like in a consolidation collapse or fibrosis one student asked me what is consolidation so consolidation means a pneumonia a hardening of the lung tissue or it could be pl- pleural like in pleural effusion if they are diminished on both sides emphysema fibrosis collapse or asthma why because emphysema both sides are hyperinflated bilateral fibrosis bilateral collapse bilateral consolidation and asthma because it's a general disorder of the lungs examiners love to ask the accessory muscles of inspiration so remember to know their names and this is how you palpate before you palpate remember to rub your fingers rub your hands make them warm examiner would love this gesture because you do not want to touch the patient with cold hands always ask the patient and tell them that you would like to examine their chest you would like them to undress and you would like to touch their chest take permission and both the patient and the examiner would really appreciate for that so this is how we examine the posterior see this gap between the thumbs when you move the patient in spires this will move and we will be able to appreciate which side is moving more when we check posterior this is where the patient's fingers are placed and this is how we are checking with the fold of skin between our thumbs and this is on the anterior coming to mediastinum normal mediastinum is central if the mediastinum gets shifted to this side then this sternocleidomastoid becomes more prominent this is called trail sign if this side mediastinum is shifted or trachea is shifted then this one becomes more prominent when we inspect it's called trail sign when we palpate then we keep two fingers on the clavicular heads and one finger which is usually our middle finger on the trachea and palpate from up to down check for the distance in these spaces and see if it is different 
so insert your finger in the suprasternal notch and note its relation with the sternum astoids normally it may be shifted slightly to the right or the left remember to tell the patient you are touching his neck and then touch the patient the other way of measuring media or checking media sternum is the apex beat so whenever you check for look for apex beat say suppose this is the patient and this is where let us draw this so this is where the patient's heart is and this is the apex beat so usually the apex beat will be in the mid clavicular line in the fifth space just medial to the mid clavicular line and this position we must know if the medial sternum is shifted to the right it will drag the apex to the right if the medial sternum is shifted to the left so the lung here is pushing it or the lung on the left is pulling it then it will be shifted to the left and that's how the position of the apex beat will shift this is how we check for the trachea this table is very very important and you must understand why this position is changing so central position of medial sternum will be usually either in general diseases of the chest where there's no one lung predilection like asthma copd bronchitis bronchic tears where there's no pulling or pushing emphysema where both sides are equally enlarged a pneumonia which is somewhere in the center not really affecting the medial sternum or an abscess or ilds but when they pull to the same side it has to be either collapse means the lung is deflated at the point so carrying it inwards towards itself or fibrosis where there is a lot of fibrous tissue again taking the lung inwards or the pleura of the lung is so thick like leather and this one is pulling the whole thing towards its end if it's shifted it has mostly got to do with a massive pleural effusion or a hydronemothorax or a pneumothorax here and that is why it shifts the whole lung to the opposite side after we've done and check the media sternum the next in pal patient we checking for tactile vocal formatus which is the tactile perception of vibrations always check from the ulna border check simultaneously on both sides don't go this way down check this right and left and compare it's important to know the conditions where it is increased the most important being consolidation it's also important to know where it may be decreased and that could be either pleural cause bronchial cause or lung cause now in pleural cause anything that dampens these vibrations like fluid or air in the pleura secretions or fibrosis will decrease the tvf and the same will go hand in hand with vocal resonance the only difference is there we're using a stethoscope other vibrations may be infrequently appreciated like pleural friction rubs because of pleurisy bronchial fremitus and palpable rales not frequently appreciated be sure to note them before you tell your examiner about them and check for tenderness over the chest as well helps in understanding any local injury